GPS dog fence is technology embedded in a collar controlled by a smartphone app that allows you to create a fence as easily as by using your finger on your smartphone that the collar will use to enforce a fence and keep your dog from leaving. And that's very important to distinguish a GPS dog fence from what other people might call a virtual fence, which is just an alerting system to tell you if your dog leaves and now you have to go find it. A GPS dog fence like Halo actually keeps your dog from leaving. And that's what's vitally different between those two concepts. So how does GPS work? I think everyone is familiar with GPS because it's in your car or on your phone. And it is what most people refer to as the way to navigate from one place to another, turn by turn directions. But actually GPS is a constellation of satellites that the United States has deployed in space that allow a device on earth, like your phone or your car to find out, figure out where it is simply by listening to those satellites. And while GPS is the system deployed by the United States, there are actually numerous other satellite networks deployed by other countries that are also doing the same kind of thing, albeit with different, slightly different performance. And the Halo Collar is able to receive location data from all of them. And there's seven of them uh, globally. Four, the Collar will always be in range of. The United States GPS system, the Russian GLONASS system, the European Galileo system, and the Chinese Baidu system. So all of those are accessible worldwide. And then there are several regional satellite systems in India, Korea, and Japan that the, the Halo Collar will also be able to receive. So how does the Halo Collar use GPS? Well, once the Halo determines its latitude and longitude, it also tries to determine how accurate that latitude and longitude is at that location. And it's able to do that by the reporting of data from each satellite and analyzing that performance data to determine is the location that it's getting very, very accurate, accurate enough to, in, to use for a fence. So that's all very important. It also combines data from internal sensors that it has because the GPS signal can actually move even when your dog is not moving. But Halo knows when your dog is moving using other sensors. So it can supplement the data from the GPS receiver combined with its knowledge about motion and acceleration to determine if the position is not really moving, it will keep your dog in the same position um, with respect to the fence and what you see in your Halo Collar app. So there's actually a lot of uh, smarts built into Halo. It doesn't just accept the data the way it is. It actually does a lot of intelligent and very unique processing of that data to provide the most accurate solution possible. There are some very unique functionalities built into your Halo Collar that other products just don't have. Actually, many of those, and they're the result of years of R&D that the Halo team has been performing and continues to perform to provide the most accurate GPS solution ever for a pet. One of those that was recently released is our AI-driven precision GPS technology, and that's very unique to Halo. And what we are doing is we're using artificial intelligence, which I could describe in more detail in a little bit, to get the most accurate possible location, uh, regardless of the conditions around and ways that other products just can't do. So that's something that we do that's very unique. Also, the way we analyze those incoming signals to determine the signal quality, the signal level, and how we respond in the different conditions is very unique to Halo. And that's because Halo has a purpose. Its purpose is to keep your dog safe, safely contained, and know that it should do that 
uh, differently in different uh, GPS conditions. So what makes Halo super unique and our patent very important is that it's designed to work with the way dogs understand, which is as soon as you give the dog the command and it responds, that feedback stops because it did what you asked. And then if necessary, it switches to a different kind of command automatically that encourages your dog to come back. And it does that when your dog is heading home. And it will do combine those two to actually guide your dog to safety, not only to keep it from leaving, but guide it to safety. That whole concept is patented by Halo and no one else can do it. Um, and it's very important because dogs actually respond to it and they understand. And it doesn't rely on fear or pain. It just simply relies on basic associative memory and some training and repetition. So dogs like it, it's fun to teach your dog and then dogs actually will respond to it and know what to do. AI, the way I like to think of it in a kind of simplified way, is not based on an algorithm, which is how typical uh, software engineering has worked, but based on recognizing patterns from the past to understand what might be happening now. And that's kind of how a human thinks, and that's what makes it artificial intelligence. The way the Halo GPS system uses AI is by having been trained on the difference in signal reception from signals that are bouncing off of obstacles like walls, rocks, or even the ground before they are heard by the receiver, and distinguishing what that kind of signal looks like compared to a signal that's coming straight from space right into the receiver's antenna. And that's very important because the signals that are coming in straight, if you calculate their distance, that's the true distance between the collar and the satellite. But if a signal is bouncing off of something, then the distance it takes to get from the satellite to the collar is actually not what you might think because the signal is not taking a direct line, it's bouncing off of something. And that bounce, that incorrect distance, actually translates into an error in the position that could be significant. So it's very important that Halo can tell the difference between the signals that are bouncing and the signals that are not bouncing. And the way it does that is by having been trained using AI to know the difference and recognize the difference through patterns that it's been trained on so that it can see with new data which is direct and which are bounced signals. And that's what ultimately drives our precision GPS uh, technology that creates such an accurate GPS dog fence. These are common questions because GPS typically is affected by these things. I'll explain how. If you think about the halo collar as kind of your eyes and you look up at the sky if you can see the sky you can definitely see any satellite uh, in that part of the sky if you can't see the sky because it's blocked then it then you have an obstruction and depending on what that obstruction is may completely block any satellite behind it or it may just have an impact on how strong the signal is that reaches the collar so when it comes to mountains and very tall buildings, those almost definitely will block any satellite behind them. Um, that's not really much of an issue because at least with mountains, for the most part, when you're looking up at the sky, it does have somewhat of an impact on the number of the amount of kind of the half dome of the earth that you can see, but not a major impact. Maybe you'll lose 20% of the sky at most to mountains. But remember, there's hundreds of satellites above, and the likelihood is you'll see many satellites. Halo is typically seeing 30, 40 satellites at a time. So if you lose 20% of those, that's fine. When it comes to things like a very tall building, that will also block satellites on the other side of the building in a very similar way. Both the mountains and the tall buildings not only will block satellites behind them, but as I mentioned earlier, could also create reflections, bouncing of signals that bounce off the mountain, take a lot longer to reach the halo, 
bounce off the building and take longer to reach the halo. And that's where precision GPS comes in and so important. There are other obstacles like trees, leaves, and clouds that used to have a big impact on other, and probably still do on other GPS products. But for Halo, because it has the strongest reception possible for a GPS collar, both through the strength of its antenna, as well as the, the technology embedded in its GPS receiver, is able to receive those signals perfectly fine, uh, regardless of leaves and clouds and things like that. It does degrade the signal, but the GPS receiver is extremely sensitive and able to pick up uh, the signal anyway. And all it's trying to do is measure distance. So the distance calculation is not affected as long as the signal is coming straight from space. Even if it goes through a cloud or leaves to the halo, it's coming straight. So the location data is not really affected as long as the signal can be received. And again, because Halo is so sensitive, it's able to receive signals bounce coming right through uh, leaves, trees, and clouds. If you look at the Halo uh, app and you open your pet card, you'll see some indicators uh, associated with each pet. And one of those is the GPS signal level indicator. You have a high GPS signal when typically when you're outside, you may get a medium GPS signal level, mostly when you're inside. And then the same is true for low. So typically low and medium are much more likely to occur uh, indoors. All of this behavior, high, medium, and low GPS also affects the way Halo contains your dog. So all of that kind of works together to provide a safe solution that when your dog is inside, if there's not a good signal, it will stop tracking, it will stop giving feedback. If your dog is outside, it should have a very strong signal and it should be both tracking and using feedback to keep your dog safe. Right, so GPS drift is an interesting phenomenon of GPS. It's a challenge that we've been working on to solve uh, for a long time. And we believe we have a very uh, strong solution, just uh, most recently deployed, actually. And we're continuing to try to make this a complete non-issue. But the, uh, the concept behind this is that the GPS signals can be strong. And even with all the AI technology that we use and all the other techniques that we use, the position can sometimes move even when the, your dog is not moving. And we realize that because we have a motion sensor, we know your dog's not really moving. So we know that the position is stationary, even though the position from this receiver is moving. So what we'll do is we'll keep your dog at that same location because we know it's not actually moving. So now the Halo algorithms built in handle that GPS drift in a way that keeps your dog uh, located correctly and also keeps it from getting uh, false preventions when this kind of thing happens. And we really just are now rolling out our latest uh, improvement to GPS drip. It's something that is important for a GPS dog collar. There's no other collar on the market that uh, deals with GPS drip the way Halo does. And we're very uh, proud of the work we've done, but there's always room for improvement. We're constantly working to make it flawless, but uh, we're very excited to see our customers' uh, reaction. We've been uh, getting great feedback so far, so hopefully you don't experience any issue of GPS drift going forward, but we're always on the lookout and we're happy to work with you. If you do experience anything like it, we will work with you, we will help you and give you guidance on how to address it. Why is the GPS location wrong sometimes? Well, that's an interesting question. Uh, we just talked about drift. That's one potential reason for GPS error. But again, Halo has some built-in functionality to deal with that. Just keep in mind also that when your dog is transitioning from a low GPS environment to a high GPS environment, that may take several seconds to become strong and get an accurate position. And when your dog goes from high GPS to low GPS, the position will stop adjusting um, after a few seconds. And that's just uh, how it's designed. I think what's important about this is to remember that Halo 
is not designed in a way that your dog is memorizing a very precise line in the ground that it needs to ingrain that if it gets to this line, it's going to get some kind of painful uh, experience. And therefore it's afraid of the line. And if it gets close to the line and it gets that painful response early, that's a problem. It's gonna be very confusing or discouraging to the dog. Or if it can sometimes pass the line and not get that feedback, it's also gonna be confusing. Halo doesn't work that way. And it's very important to, to remember that. So your dog should never be afraid of Halo, ever. We know that GPS isn't gonna be exactly accurate to the inch or to the foot, but that doesn't matter because the dog, your dog's not memorizing a line. Your dog is just knowing that when it's told to stop and turn around, it should. So as long as we keep the halo fence safely away from roads and other hazards that you don't want your dog to get to, and we have not only a distance between the fence and that hazard, but we also have a warning area there's plenty of time for your dog to get feedback and stop and turn around before it gets to that dangerous position of being in a hazard. So these are kind of areas, they're not lines. It's kind of like a force field keeping your dog from running away, not a line to cross. And it's certainly not true, unlike other systems, that when it crosses the line, it's free. That's certainly not true. In this case, there's an entire space, really all of space, that is kind of pushing your dog through feedback to come back. Um, so it's not a line to cross, and you should not think of it that way. It's kind of an area of safety, an area of warning, an area of prevention, all keep intending to keep your dog from getting even close to an unsafe location, and therefore keeping your dog safe but free. And that's really what's important to remember. It's not about memorizing flags and lines in the ground. It's about getting the signal before you get to the obstruction in a timely manner that your dog knows what to do, which is to stop and turn around and therefore keep it safe.